Today we have another Monday Motivation Cleaning video and it is sponsored by Cricut, which we will get more into later. We have a lot to do and a lot of disinfecting to do. My kids were homesick with hand, foot, and mouth all week last week, so things got messy and gross. Lysol and just disinfectant sprays have been helping me disinfect throughout the week, but it's worth another pass and mostly just cleaning up the mess that accrues when you have three kids homesick. With the time that I have, I am focusing on the first floor and kitchen today because that is where we spent most of our time last week and it's the messiest. The fridge and freezer also need a good cleanup because things have spilled in there. And I know there is some rotting food or something going on in the fridge because you do not get a fresh whiff of air when you open the fridge. It kind of kills the appetite. So we're going to fully clean and clear that out. Per usual, I always have to shamelessly plug my channel and other social medias. Subscribe for more clean with me, shop with me, declutter with me, just whatever I'm doing in life content. And then also follow me on Instagram and TikTok just at my zimmy. We'll start off by clearing off the kitchen island. Is it just me or does the kitchen island seem to just accrue things the fastest? Out of any area in the house, if I have to set something down quickly, it goes on the kitchen island. And as a result, it gets to the point where you can't even hardly see the island. It just looks like a giant dumping area. So that is what I'm trying to correct at this moment. I also went to Central Market and got a whole bunch of different types of apples to try. Some that I'd never even heard of, like the Diva and the Dazzle Apple. The, these are things you get excited about in your 30s. I'm really excited to try these new apples. Anyways, let's finish off cleaning off all the countertops and the table here, and then we're going to spray it down with Microban. This week was my first week ever trying out Microban. Actually, one of y'all told me about it, but the thing I really like about it is it's a strong disinfectant, which is what my house needs right now, and a lot of antibacterial or disinfectant sprays, it needs to sit on the surface for five to 10 minutes before you wipe it off in order for it to truly kill the 99.9% .9 of germs that it claims to get rid of. And with Microban, I like that it only has to sit for one minute. And I can wait one minute. This is in like fast motion and obviously I'm cutting out the dead points, but I did wait the 60 seconds required before wiping everything down. If I have to wait more than 60 seconds, it's, it's probably not gonna happen because I'm just not that patient. Now I'm vacuuming our washable rug with my Dyson vacuum cleaner. Unfortunately, our dryer is broken. Otherwise, I would have just thrown this rug in the washer and dryer. But till we have our new dryer, I have to vacuum this. And unfortunately, to add insult to injury, my stick vacuum that I would normally vacuum the kitchen area with is broken. As you can see here, I can't even like use it to suck up dust. And then it definitely doesn't work when it has the longer vacuum attachment on it. So I struggled with the Dyson, which is too strong for this rug and was like trying to suck it up. So I did the best I could. Now let's just fully clear off the island and get some of these dishes out of the sink because next we are going to be moving to clearing out the fridge and freezer. And I don't know how much space it's going to be taking up and how much is going to be needing to be thrown into the sink. So I just want to clear the slate so that we can start filling it back up. I'm going to work through the refrigerator in three sections because I don't want too much food sitting out for too long of a time and potentially have things go bad because that's kind of why we're in this mess to begin with. There's definitely some food that has gone bad in here. So I'm clearing out everything from the first door, including all the shelving, and we're just gonna look through, see what's expired, see what we can keep, and then I'm going to clean all the drawers and put everything back. Oh, and this is a new salad dressing find. It is so good. It tastes like the dressing that they put on hibachi salads. So good. And then the Ghirardelli chocolate is just the best chocolate for when you want to treat yourself or your kids to a nice fine dessert. It's so rare that I clean out my fridge. I think the last time I did it was little over six months ago. So as long as I'm doing this, I'm gonna do it right. And I'm washing every single little drawer, nook and cranny in the fridge, starting with these drawers. 
And the last time I did the fridge clean out, I didn't know that these drawers popped out. Y'all told me in the comments I could do this, so this is the first time I've ever popped out these drawers and given them a full, thorough cleaning. As I put all the drawers back, I'm also going to put away the food on this side of the door. At the bottom shelf, I have sweet items like jams and jellies. On this shelf I'm stacking right now, I have all the different ranch dressings that we have because we're obsessed with ranch and then also blue cheese. And then the top shelf is going to have any of the other dressings and marinades and our Ghirardelli chocolate. And then last is just the butter up top. Moving to door number two, it's the same exact process over again. So as I'm clearing this out, enjoy this nice music. And then also let me know in the comments below, what type of music do you like listening to in these types of clean with me videos? And then do you also like more music, more talking? Let me know in the comments below. Of course, all the power in my entire house just went out right now. So I am going to pause on cleaning out my fridge because just in case this power outage lasts a really long time, I obviously don't want to be letting all the cold air out. So I'll get back to cleaning out this fridge once the power turns back on, hopefully soon. As I'm waiting for the power to turn back on, I'm going to be removing the covers to all the pillows in the downstairs because they got all icky from the illness that was going around the house last week. So I'm getting just any soft items, pillow covers, blankets, like throws, and I'm putting them in the basket. And even though they cannot be washed yet, since our dryer is not working, I can at least get them out of here and put into the laundry room so that I can get to them whenever we do get our new appliances. I was about to vacuum this area and then I realized the power is out, so I can't even do that. So let's wipe down the kitchen. Using the microban once again to wipe down all the kitchen counters. I'm not sure how well it's going to work on granite, but we shall see. Now I'm just going to polish up some of these stainless steel appliances so that they look sparkling clean again. A new appliance that we have in our kitchen is this mini fridge slash freezer that my boys can use to just keep track of their frozen items, their refrigerated items. With our current French door fridge freezer setup, 
they can't reach the tall area of the fridge and then they have a bad habit of leaving the bottom freezer part open because things get jammed up and then they're not able to close it. So we're hoping having this little setup for them allows them to have more independence, get things on their own. It relieves me of having to fetch them simple things all the time. And then hopefully things in our freezer won't get all bad and freezer burn from them opening and closing the French door all the time. We got a couple new cereals. My kids seem to like them this morning, but I like them because there's only three grams of sugar in this, eight grams of protein, it's 120 calories, and this is for a third, fourths of a cup. But the ingredients are just chickpea, tapioca, pea protein, organic cane sugar, cocoa, natural flavors, salt, and monk fruit. So my kids really liked this one. It'll for sure be a rebuy. I haven't seen this one at Whole Foods, but I have seen Love Grown at Whole Foods. They are pricey, but you're paying for the ingredients and for less sugar and it still tastes good and your kids eat it. Noticing it right now, I'm not sure how well you can tell on camera, but the microban, while it's great because it's killing all the icky, icky germs, it's left, there, you can kind of see it there. It's left this streaky, filmy substance on this. So now that I know it's fully disinfected, I'm gonna use an actual granite cleaner to get this sparkling clean tabletop again. Next, we're going to clean off the stove top. After I wipe away all just the initial large pieces of food and crumbs, I'm excited to try my new Pink Stuff Cream Cleanser Cleaner. Never tried it before. It seems like similar to soft scrub or something like that. I mean, really, it's pretty similar to just the regular standard pink stuff in the tub, just a watered down version. But overall, it worked well enough. It got all of the grime off of the stove top and then I was able to wipe it all off clean with just some water and a cloth towel. Power is back on, hallelujah. So now we are going to clear out the center, largest portion of the fridge, clean out everything, wipe down everything, and hopefully find what is stinking up this fridge. Oh, this basil went bad and just like leaked all over me. There's some really gross gummed up spillage on some of these glass shelves, so I'm using my Dawn Power Wash and the Scrub Daddy brush to get the gooey sludge off.
putting all the veggies in one bin and all the fruit in the other bin, along with a fresh paper in each one, just to keep everything fresher for longer. I realized at this point that I put in the shelves just a tad bit high, so I moved it down one peg just to maximize the actual usable space above the shelves. the final fridge. We have a lot more space on the bottom there, teeny space on the side there, but a lot more space in the middle. Fruits and veggies are on their opposite side, meat and cheese on the bottom. Now we have to fully clear out the freezer that has some major spills on the bottom. I don't know what that is that spilled down there, but it's really gooey and sticky, almost like caramel. So I tried to see if I could take out the whole shelf to wash it, but there was no way to remove it, at least not that I could tell. So I had to manually go in with the scrub brush and clear out all the trash. The goo in the front of the freezer was a lot thicker and harder to remove than the stuff that was in the back, so I got my scraper tool that I use when I'm cleaning tough to clean pots and pans in the sink and tried using that. That didn't really work. I tried using some warm water. Really, it was just a lot of elbow grease in the end to get it removed and a lot of scrubbing and scraping with the scrub daddy. Oh, and a new thing that I started doing that I wanted to show you guys, I make a lot of smoothies in my house for me and my kids, and I started freezing bananas in this fashion to make measuring them out super easy. I often put just one whole banana in the smoothie frozen, and to know that I'm getting a full banana, I line them up straight like this, cut them into pieces, and when it comes to making the smoothie, I just pop one out, put it in, and it makes it so easy, fast, and precise. Now I am cleaning out the leftover graveyard that was in my fridge, just Tupperware full of food that is no longer edible. And this one here, this weird yogurty milky thing, might have been what was stinking up the fridge. And I'm not wearing my dish gloves right now, so I'm using this little knife to stab everything down into the disposal because I don't, I don't want to infect my hand with it. Now that every dish in my house is fully clean or in the dishwasher, I am going to clean out the sink and I'm also going to use my blue glisten packets to clean out the disposal to just get any funky smells out. It's usually very visibly pleasing to watch this process because all this blue like foam comes out of both ends, but I think because I have the dishwasher going right now simultaneously, the drains are clearing quicker so I don't get the pretty blue effect that I normally get. 
vacuuming up the floor now with my corded Dyson vacuum. I do want to get another cordless lightweight stick vacuum to just keep near the kitchen. While the Dyson does work great, it's just a pain to have to haul all over and worry about the cord. Like having cordless vacuums are really nice for just multiple every single day use, but my current one is broken and I'm not going to rebuy it because I only had it for six months before it broke and getting the warranty fulfilled is a pain and it seems like it's just not even going to happen. So I'm just going to buy a new cordless vacuum. Leave your suggestions down in the comment section below of a good cordless vacuum. This time I definitely think I'm going to be getting it from Costco because they have the best return policy if anything does go awry and it breaks after just a few months again. But yes, leave your Costco bought cordless vacuum recommendations below, please. Next, now that everything is clean, I just want to do another round around the house of quick disinfecting again. Just door handles, light switches, and then I don't know if this is the proper way to do it, so comment below if you have a better way. But this rug, I'm just doing a super light spray, nothing serious, but just something because this is not an easily washable rug. So this is the only way I really know how to kind of disinfect it. Now let me show you this super simple organization project that I did with my Cricut machine, which is the sponsor of today's video, but I am constantly picking up tiny people's shoes all over my house, so I decided to make these shoe bins, one for each of my boys with just a few pairs of shoes in them so that they can easily find the matching pairs and personal responsibility and accountability. If someone hasn't been putting away their shoes and there's rogue shoes all over the house, I can look at the bins, see who doesn't have three pairs and make them pick up their shoes. The materials for this really easy project, I got the teal bins from Walmart. I'm using my Cricut Joy Smart Vinyl and transfer tape the weeding tool, the scraper, and then my Cricut Joy. The first thing I'm going to do before I start designing the labels is I am going to measure out roughly how big I want the labels with my measuring tape. Then I'm opening Cricut Design Space, choosing the text tool and writing out my boys' names and selecting the font that I want. The font I ended up with is the Equinox Com. If you find a font that you like but the letter spacing is a little off, go to Advanced and select Ungroup Letters. This allows you to move the letters where you want it to be, then you can select it all and weld for it to be one image altogether. I quickly had all my boys' names written and then decided to use all of their full names. Because of the amount of letters and the amount of space I wanted it to take up, I wanted the fonts to be similar in size, height, width, all of that to be similar in size, and that was more achievable when I didn't use any three-letter names. Once the labels looked exactly how I wanted them, I selected to make the project. It said that I needed about 5.5 inches of material, so I cut that amount off, inserted it into the machine, and clicked go. It cut really fast since this is a small project. I separated out each label, removed the excess vinyl, weeded out any of the excess vinyl in between some of the letters, and then I was able to use the transfer tape to transfer the label onto the box. Use the scraper tool at this point to scrape the label onto the transfer tape, peel it off, and then put it on the box. And just a note to save you money, you can reuse the same piece of transfer tape a few times. I use the same piece of tape for this entire project, all three shoe boxes. If you're interested in doing fun small projects like this, then the Cricut Joy Machine is perfect because it is small, compact, and easy to use. There are a wide variety of DIY projects that you can do with it, and it's just the cherry on top when organizing an area to be more beautiful. I will have links down below if you want to look into it and learn more about it, but let's get back to the video and organize me and my boys' cluttered shoe area. Now that the shoe boxes are done, let's clean up the shoe area, clean the cube storage that the shoes go in and on, and as long as we're doing this, let's clean up this wall that is just covered in shoe dirt. 
With everything cleaned up up top, I put out the new labeled shoe boxes and then I'm clearing out all the cubes so that I can properly clean that out. And then also just figure out what shoes should even stay and what should go. So these were all the shoes mixed in with just like random trash. Some of my shoes like socks. It was just such a hodgepodge. My boys could never find anything. So this will make it much easier for them to find exactly what they need. And Wesley wears a shoe size one size smaller than the twins right now. So it'll help him know what his shoes are. These don't fit anyone anymore. So that's just causing confusion. now can easily find exactly what he needs. He can choose between the two shoes here that he wants. And then if we're gonna go play in the water, he knows these are his water shoes. Easy, simple, he recognizes his name because I label the boys' names on like everything. Their shirts have their names on it. Um, again, because of Cricket. There were so many shoes to go through, but ultimately I got three pairs of shoes for all the kids put into their separate bins. Okay, so here is the shoe area now. So much easier to process. All of my sandals and shoes are on the bottom. We have the extra water shoes that can pretty much fit anyone in the middle there. Socks there, just a random miscellaneous outdoor items there. And then the easy access shoes. So now when I kindly request for my boys to go put on their shoes, I don't have to hear complaints that I can't find my shoes, I can't find the matching shoes, and then I have to dig through those super like filled up bins of shoes. They know exactly which shoes are theirs, which fit, and there's no way that they won't be able to find the match when there's only three pairs to choose from. If they struggle, I got, I got other problems on my hands. All right, back to disinfecting. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe. And if you want to keep hanging out, click on one of the other videos floating over the screen. I will see you next time. Bye.